Hey guys, Lorna in here today, and if you don't remember me, I don't blame you. It has been 10 months since my last video, and that is a heck of a long time. What have I been doing in those 10 months? College. I just finished my freshman year of college at the University of Oklahoma. That's, that's, that's OU right there. Boomer Sooner. I absolutely loved it. I don't think I told you guys I was going to OU before I stopped making videos abruptly. I don't know if I told you what I'm majoring in, but I'm double majoring in history and political science, and I'm probably going to add a minor in constitutional studies. So that's what I've been doing for the past 10 months, college. That was an adjustment, which is the main reason why I didn't make videos in that span was because I just didn't have time. I kind of dove in headfirst and got myself involved in a lot of things that have been really rewarding threw myself into my schoolwork and this just kind of got swept to the side but I really really missed it and so I'm back and this video my first video back is going to be a bookshelf tour because I figured why not make the longest possible video I can to make up for 10 months of zero content um so I hope you guys like it my bookshelves have grown and multiplied since the last time I made a bookshelf tour like three Years ago four years ago I honestly it's been a, it's been a while um so I hope you guys like this and I will see you on the other side okay so this shelf is the first of my three fantasy shelves and that is the entirety of this bookcase Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Arid The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Arid The Diviners by Libba Bray The Looking Glass Wars by Frank Bedore Clockwork Angel Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare City of Bones City of Ashes, City of Glass, City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, and City of Heavenly Fire by Cassandra Clare making up the Mortal Instruments series. This is the movie cover edition of the Mortal Instruments City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I thought the cover of this one was infinitely better than the covers of the actual non-movie edition books. They have really not great covers. Invisibility by Andrea Kramer and David Leventhin. Ascenders by C.L. Gaber. This is the second shelf of three fantasy shelves and it has a photo of me and one of my best friends, Alex. She's the cutie. I love her. Beautiful Creatures, Beautiful Darkness, Beautiful Chaos, by and Beautiful Redemption by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll, the last of the Beautiful Creatures series. The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer, The Evolution of Mara Dyer, and The Retribution of Mara Dyer, all by Michelle Hoodkin. The Young Elites by Mary Lou. The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. The Demigod Diaries by Rick Royden. The Lightning Thief. The Sea of Monsters. The Titan's Curse. The Battle of the Labyrinth. And The Last Olympian by Rick Royden, the fifth and final book of the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. The Lost Hero. The Son of Neptune. The Mark of Athena. The House of Hades, The Blood of Olympus by Rick Royden, the last book in the Heroes of the Olympus series. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child by J.K. Rowling. Tales of Beely the Bard by J.K. Rowling. Um, a cute little box thing that a rosary I've had since I was like this big came in. So this is the third and final shelf of the fantasy books. First we have the Harry Potter series. I'm not going to pull them out just because there's a lot of them and this video is already very long and that would take quite a bit of time. The Winner's Curse, The Winner's Crime, and the Winner's Kiss by Marie Rutowski. The Raven Boys, Dream Thieves, Blue Lily Blue, all by Maggie Stiefvater, An Ember in the Ashes, and A Torch Against the Night by Sabah Tahir. The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, The Lord of the Rings. Lastly, The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. And then the last little thing I have on the shelf is this little owl that I got at the Biltmore Estate in North Carolina when I was at Kona. And it's just another one of the owls I have scattered around my room. So this shelf is all classics. Um, with the exception of one book that for some reason is on this shelf. The first book is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, Jane Austen's Seven Novels, Jane Austen, A Study of Her Artistic Development by A. Walton Lips, The Handmaiden's Tale by Margaret Atwood, The Collected Works of Hans Christian Andersen. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he wrote fairy tales like Ariel, Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, Withering Heights by Emily Bronte, A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, The Great Gatsby Again by F. Scott Fitzgerald, and the collected works of F. Scott Fitzgerald, including selected poems by Robert Frost, North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell, The Great Writings of Goethe, edited by Stephen Spender, Fairy Tales by the Brothers Grimm, The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Harthen, The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway, a collection of works by John Keats, Newspaper Blackout by Austin Cleone. This is not a classic, 
but for some reason is on the shelf. Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk. I butchered that, I promise you. Die Lieblingsgedichte der Deutschen, which in English translates to the loved works of the Germans. The Collected Poems of Sylvia Plath. Complete Stories and Poems of Edgar Allan Poe, Anna Karina by Leo Tolstoy, Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. And then I have this little angel that I've had for a really long time. I'm actually not sure how long. It's been in my room for as long as I can remember. And so I have it on this shelf. And then I have this little mini Stein that my dad got when he was studying abroad in Germany. The little figurines on the front remind me of Hansel and Gretel from Grimm's Fairy Tales, so I have it on the same shelf as Grimm's Fairy Tales. So this is the first of two dystopian shelves. So without further ado, The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken, The Elite by Kira Cass, The Hunger Games, Catching Fire, and Mocking Jay by Suzanne Collins. Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, Legend, Prodigy, and Champion by Mary Lou, Shatter Me, Unravel Me, Ignite Me, and Unite Me by Tahara Mawafi, The Flame Alphabet by Ben Marcus, The Host by Stephanie Meyer, Cinder, Cress, and Winter by Marissa Meyer, Heartless by Marissa Meyer. And then the little thing I have on this shelf is a empty bottle of cheer wine, which is a soda that is prominent on the east coast of the United States. I got it at a competition that I went to three years during high school called the Conference on National Affairs, which was one of my highlights of high school. And so this is just a sentimental reminder. And then I have some very stiff, not usable paintbrushes from my time in high school. I think I stuck these in like a Ziploc bag and forgot about them and now they're unusable. So I just have them on display as a reminder of how not to treat your paintbrushes. <laughs> So this shelf is the last of my dystopian novels and it also houses my Marvel comics. The Knife of Never Letting Go, The Ask and the Answer, and Monsters of Men by Patrick Ness, all part of the Chaos Walking series. Divergent, Insurgent, and Allegiant by Veronica Roth, Unwind by Neil Shusterman, Uglies, Pretties, Specials, and Extras by Scott Westerfield. I have The Fifth Wave, but it's currently on loan, so this is The Infinite Sea, and The Last Star by Ricky Yance. The Program by Suzanne Young, Inhumanity, Miss Marvel No Normal, Miss Marvel Generation Y, Miss Marvel, Miss Marvel Last Days, Miss Marvel Super Famous, Thor, The Goddess of Thunder, Thor, Who Holds the Hammer, Inhumans, Avengers, Now Strike the Son of the Serpent, <laughs> Black Widow, number one, Daredevil, The Man Without Fear, Shield, Issue One, Shield, Issue Three, Shield, Issue, Shield, Issue Five, Shield, Issue Six, Shield, Issue Seven, Spider Gwen, Issue One, Spider Gwen, Issue Two. Last shelf, I'm gonna show you guys on this case. The one underneath it is just journals, yearbooks, and some Teen Vogue magazines from my youth. So I will show you guys this one. This is all nonfiction and my historic nerd books because I am a nerd as well as some textbooks because I keep some of those. And then I have the Harry Potter coloring book, A History of Western Art, the fifth edition by Laurie Schneider Adams, Modern East Asia from 1600. It won't stand up on its own, but this is introducing comparative politics, concepts, and cases in context. The third edition by Stephen Orvis and Carol Ann Drogas. One of my all-time favorites, A Team of Rivals, The Political Genius of Abraham Lincoln by Doris Kearns Goodwin. 1920, The Year of Six Presidents by David Pierre Trusa. 1776, and John Adams, both by David McClough. Logic by Stand Baronet. The Historian's Paradox by Peter Charles Hoffer. White by Law by Ian Haney Lopez. Uh, English Grammar for Students of German, the sixth edition. German grammar is the bane of my existence. I love German, hate its grammar. George Washington's Secret Six by Brian Kilmeade. Frontier, Texas, History of the Borderland to 1800. Yeehaw! By Robert F. Pace and Donald S. Frazier. Silent Spring by Rachel Carson. The Youth Catechism of the Catholic Church. In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. America the Beautiful, The Completed Verses by Catherine Lee Bates. The Jane Austen Rules uh, by Sneed Murphy. The New American Bible, aka my middle school Bible, featuring a poorly drawn peace sign. One of three copies I own of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. This is a book that if you ever get confirmed in the Catholic Church, you will receive about a thousand copies of. And then I have this little USA bookend type thing that I actually keep on top of my books. Um, this was given to me by a friend at Kona. Um, and it just hangs out with the books about U.S. history. And then I have this teapot, which I got 
at a white elephant. I don't drink tea, but I thought it was kind of pretty. <laughs> it was my grandma's, so. So this is the first of three shelves that are predominantly historical fiction and contemporary fiction and some young adult novels. There are also a few memoirs and poetry collections, as well as a few nonfiction books that are either just really pretty or books that I really, really like and I wanted to put on this shelf. So the first is A Constellation of Vital Phenomenon by Anthony Mara, To All the Boys I Loved Before, and P.S. I Still Love You, both by Ginny Han, Not After Everything by Michelle Levy, Say What You Will by Cammie McGovern, Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Raoul, Room by Emma Donahue, Songs for a Teenage Nomad by Kim Culbertson, An Abundance of Catherines by John Green, In Cold Blood by Truman Capote, I Was Told There'd Be Cake, Essays by Salone Crossley, This Is How You Lose Her by You Know Diaz, Just One Year by Gail Foreman, Just One Day by Gail Foreman, Every Day by David Leventhin, The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Skeptis, Mr. Panuma's 24-Hour Bookstore by Robin Salone, Among the Jainites by Deborah Riaffi. So this is a little owl that my brother made me for Christmas a few years ago. I think she looks like Hedwig from Harry Potter, so that's what her name is. It's Hedwig, and she is part of my owl collection. I have about five or six, six little owl statuettes scattered across my room, um, and I love them very, very much. And then the next item is a candle that my friend Camille made me uh, for Christmas this year, and it smells absolutely amazing. It's citrusy and it's fantastic. I haven't actually burnt it yet, but I love the way it smells and it's really, really pretty and it matches this part of my shelves really well because it's got both the yellow and the white in it. This is Doing Oral History, the third edition by Donald A. Ritchie. This is a textbook, but I just really love the way that it looks. The Unlikely Hero of Room 13B by Teresa Toden. The Beginning of Everything by Robin Schneider. Me, Earl, and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews. Pieces, a collection of new voices edited by Stephen Chaposky. It's Kind of a Funny Story by Ned Vizzini. I Am the Messenger by Marcus Zusak. Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Neig, a beautiful copy of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, The Swans of Fifth Avenue by Melanie Benjamin, Dash and Lily's Book of Dares by Rachel Cohn and David Leventhin, and the last item I have on this shelf is a Russian nesting doll that my grandparents got me when they were visiting St. Petersburg. I've had it for as long as I can remember, and I think there are five dolls inside of here, but she's just absolutely beautiful and red, and so she matched this portion of my shelf just beautifully. This is the second shelf on this bookcase, and it is a continuation of the same mix of contemporary historical fiction, a few memoirs, and non-fiction books that I just thought fit the shelves nicely. Paper Towns by John Green, Sojourner Truth, A Life, A Symbol by Nell Irvin Painter, The Narrative of Sojourner Truth by Sojourner Truth, The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern, Me Before You by Jojo Moyes, Winger by Andrew Smith, The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Jabosky, Fangirl by Rainbow Raoul, This I Believe, The Personal Philosophies of Remarkable Men and Women, um, edited by Jay Allison and Dan Gateman in association with NPR. It doesn't quite fit standing up, but it's The Age of Miracles by Karen Thompson Walker. The Last Painting of Sarah DeVos by Dominic Smith. All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. Boxers and Saints by Jean Loyan Yang. The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. All the Bright Places by Jennifer Nevin. One of my favorite books in middle school, 13 Little Blue Envelopes by Maureen Johns. Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Safran Fuller. The book of Unknown Americans by Christina Henriquez, The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Neffinger, Cry the Beloved Country by Alan Patton, Yes Please by Amy Poehler, Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Ally, Where Things Come Back by John Corey Whaley, United Nations Frontier Service 2, The First Generation Ship by John A. Wells, Musui's Story, The Autobiography of a Tokugawa Samurai by Katsu Kohiki, Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins, Every Last Word by Tamara Ireland Stone, The Girl with a Pearl Ear Earring by Tracy Cheevler, A Voice in the Wind by Francine Rivers, The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, Speak by Lori Hollis Anderson. So this is the last of three shelves and it's the same as the other two, historical fiction, contemporary fiction, some YA, um, a few nonfiction books, and a few poetry anthologies. So without further ado. The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Go Ask Alice by Anonymous, Breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capote, Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Safran Foer, Teen Years of Madness, Oral Histories of China's Cultural Revolution by Finn Xiaki, Looking for Alaska by John Green, A Double Identity by Margaret Peterson Haddix, The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins, The Kite Runner by Khalid Hussini, The Hundred-Year-Old Man Who Climbed Out of the Window and Disappeared by Jonas Jonasson, Milk and Honey by Ruby Kaur, 
Lost Names by Richard E. Kim, Boy 21 by Matthew Quick, A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, I Wrote This For You and Only You by Please Find This, This Song Will Save Your Life by Leela Sales, Cleopatra, A Life by Stacey Schiff, Amy Tan, The Joy Luck Club, The Narrative of Surgeon and Truth by Surgeon and Truth and edited by Nail Irvin Painter, The Martian by Andy Weir, Teen Angst, Nah by Ned Vizzini, Memoirs of a Teenage Amnesiac by Gabriella Zevin, The Federalist Papers, John Jay Got Sick After Writing Five, Madison Wrote 29, and Hamilton Wrote The Other 51. Lincoln's Speeches by Abraham Lincoln, The Man, The Myth, the Legend, Barkskins by Annie Prolix, Life After Life by Kate Atkinson, The Hamilton Affair by Elizabeth Cobbs, The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith, aka J.K. Rowling, Night Film by Marisha Pessel, Last but certainly not least, A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khalid Husseini. So those are my books that I have collected in the past three years. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I will be making more videos soon and will be continuing to make videos for the foreseeable future. Like I said, I really miss this and I want to get back to it and I want to make time for it when I go to college and I have a thing that will be coming down the pipe with one of my best friends from college when we are both back in the same state. She's currently in DC. Yes, Camille, I'm adding you. But I hope you guys will like that and you'll hear more about that in the coming months. And I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. And for all of those of you who like left comments on my videos in the past 10 months asking me to come back and telling me you missed my videos, that really meant a lot to me and is one of the reasons why I'm right here. Thank you guys for that and I will see you soon. I'm sorry it took so long. <laughs> Bye!